This is not my return to booktube. I just want to brag. Hello, my name is Margaret Adele, and in January of 2022, I looked at my TBR of over 400 books, and I said, oh no, this too big. <laughs> and now, as I sit here, August 31st of 2024, my TBR is sitting at zero books. And we're going to talk about how I did it. Quick disclaimer and explanation here, this video was filmed over the course of several days as my TBR was nearing zero, so you're going to see lighting changes and outfit changes. That's just, I didn't want to do it all in one day. But you're also not going to hear me ever, like, beating down on other people who have the large TBRs, okay? 400 was too much for me. I didn't like having that much. I wanted it pared down and to get more purposeful with my reading. So if you have your giant piles of books and you like it, go with the gods and be merry. That's fine. This is for me. And let's jump into it. So how did I end up with over 400 books on my TBR? Oddly enough, our story begins with poverty. I did not grow up with any kind of affluence. We were not going hungry poor, but we were if dinner gets burnt, you're eating burnt food because we literally don't have any other money in the budget to get new groceries poor. And books were just a luxury item we didn't have a lot of access to. You could ask for one for Christmas or your birthday, but there was never really a, a way to just casually pick up new books to own. I used almost exclusively the library. And there was a stretch of time in which I did not even have a lot of access to the public library. From ages 10 to 16, we lived in a place so rural, my bus ride in the morning was 45 minutes long that we could not afford to go into town regularly just because the amount of gas it would use. So I was almost exclusively relying on school libraries. And at one point, the school I went to had this teeny tiny itty bitty nothing of a library. So I learned really quickly that I can't be picky. I have to grasp at whatever is there, whatever I can get my hands on, because yes, I was one of those clearing five books in a week middle school girlies. Uh, but then, as I got older and I got my own big girl job at 19, I finally got myself a nook. This cost me $90 at the time, and this was in, I was 19, so this would have been 2012. And it was the most expensive thing I had ever bought at the time. And I was low key panicking over spending that much money. So I was like, okay, I have to make this work. I have to get so much use out of this thing to justify that $90. And at first I was using um, the Project Gutenberg, which if you don't know, it is an organization made to digitize books that are outside the realm of copyright and give them away for free. So I would read a lot of classics like Frankenstein and Dracula that way. Uh, and then my mom had told me about a service called BookBub, which is an ebook service that will send you daily emails with uh, deals on ebooks based on the genre preferences you give them. And there was a time, a fairly long period of time, where I was basically insta downloading any ebook that was free. And ironically, that's how I ended up getting into reading ebooks in the first place, because for the most part, in any of those BookBub emails, if the book was free, it was probably self published. So I actually stumbled into reading ebooks, uh, indie ebooks, accidentally. But that is where it began. And uh, fun fact, I did check. It's not charged right now, but I have charged it recently. Most of my old BookBub books are still on this thing. And while this is no longer useful to keep updated, they don't support it anymore, unfortunately, um, I can still use it. And I'm low-key might go back and try to read through at least some of the BookBub books just to see. Um, but I do not consider anything on here to be a part of my TBR because I don't use this regularly anymore. It used to be my favorite thing. Um, I had this before I had a smartphone. So for a while, this was the only tablet in my life. Uh, but this was the beginning <laughs> of the problem uh, where I got so many ebooks that I was only tangentially interested in. I did find some favorites, which low-key also kind of kept me going because I'd be like, well, that one space opera series was so fantastic. I'm sure there's another diamond in the rough in here. So I would just keep digging through the rough and keep downloading more ebooks that I was only kind of sort of maybe interested in. Mostly I was just interested in the fact that it was being given away for free. <laughs> so 
this became a giant part of the problem. And when I get into the first rounds of, of unhauling and everything, the BookBub ebooks uh, will become a very big issue. <laughs> So for several years, that nook and those ebooks are the entirety of my book access. At one point, I would start buying ebooks, but it usually was books further in a series where I had gotten the first one free off BookBub and liked it enough. Eventually, I moved out and was still not living that much better. <laughs> I was living off of a part-time retail job and student loans, but I remember the uh, exhilaration I felt when I realized the city I had moved to had a Barnes and Noble. And I was like, I can go buy a new book at Barnes and Noble just because, you know, not because it was Christmas or my birthday or a grandparent felt generous. I could just go and get one. And I still remember I have the book. I went out and I bought The Thousand Names by Django Wexler, mostly because it was $8. Okay. I was getting a new book, but I wasn't going crazy. And I picked really well, actually, because this is one of my favorite fantasy series. And I don't usually do that kind of heavy fantasy. Uh, but I still wasn't buying a lot until I met a guy. <laughs> and we hit it off. And I moved into his house. And now I am in a house. And we have an office. And this office has bookcases. Well, actually, I don't think it had very many bookcases when I first moved in. We've actually gotten a lot. But as I got bookcases, I was like, I can get more books books. And again, like a mind blowing moment. And I did not, I did not just go out to like Barnes and Noble and buy a bunch of books new. Okay. Still came from poverty. But as I got a better job and graduated and we got our finances more under control, uh, I started buying a lot of books at thrift stores. Davenport, Iowa, or I guess all the Quad Cities really, has a rather large amount of secondhand bookstores. I would walk into them and I always could not make myself walk out empty-handed. I had to get at least one book because I had the option now. I wanted to support these businesses because I wanted them to keep being a thing. And there was still that kind of you can't be picky. You have to grasp at whatever is there and just go for it. And so I would buy a lot of books that I had only tangential interest in. And the worst of it was this secondhand nerd store in town. They sell like uh, secondhand video games and consoles and DVDs and CDs and the walls of Funko Pops. Uh, but at one point, they also sold secondhand books. But the secondhand books were not very popular with their customer base. So they just wanted to get rid of them. So they had a buy one, get four free sale. So, of course, I walk in, I look at the books, I find one that really interests me. And then I'm like, well, I have to get four more. It's buy one, get four free. So I walk out of there with one or two books that I'm very interested in and three or four that I don't really care about just because it's buy one, get four free. And I end up with, I think at one point, an entire shelf on this bookcase was literally just those secondhand paperbacks I could not have cared about. And again, I find one or two series that I really love through that store. And so obviously I can't give it up. Thankfully, this one was taken away from me when they eventually did run out of books and just closed off that section and replaced it with yet more walls of Funko Pops. <laughs> and now when we go to that store occasionally, it's not even uh, a temptation anymore. But that's kind of how it began, where even when I had access to books that are objectively, you know, still cheaper, still more eco-friendly, I got caught up getting a lot of books that I was only kind of interested in because I, I felt like... I had to. Like, I couldn't afford to be picky. I was still in that get what you can get because you don't know what you're going to be able to get later mindset. Because it is it is very hard. If you've never grown up poor, even once you leave that lifestyle and you get access to more resources, it is so hard to stop feeling like you have to grab at everything. And eventually that turned into when we would go to indie bookstores. We would travel and get, I, again, felt like, I could not walk out of the store empty-handed. I have to support indie. So again, I have books that I am only kind of interested in, but I feel like I have to get them because they're books and my shelves continue to explode. <laughs> and uh, at one point, it didn't help that I didn't have a lot of knowledge on where to go to unhaul. So it felt like, well, once they're here, they're stuck here. <laughs> no other option. <laughs> but that's how I ended up with over 400 books on my TBR 
And I can't remember exactly what it was that first inspired me to like really sit down and figure out how many books I had and how you know bad the damage was. But I do remember being shocked because I would not have thought it was anything close to that at the time. I was not keeping track as I went. I could not. I could, but I was not aware that I could uh, track things like that or keep any kind of records like that because I had not known that was an option you have because that wasn't really an option I had growing up. I didn't have the option to research authors and go back to repeat authors. I had very little limited access even to the internet growing up. So that was the eye-opening moment when I realized, oh, I have over 400 and I did not know. I thought I was one of the good ones that had the lower TBR because I was getting all of my books secondhand or whatever. Nope, it can still get out of hand. But now we can jump into how it got started, how I started this crazy journey of getting books from 400 to zero. As the story of my TBR getting that big began with poverty, so the story of my TBR challenge begins with failure. <laughs> I had actually made an attempt years prior to my actual successful attempt, and it did not go well. Uh, this is the spread that I had at the time, and as you may be able to see, I was not terribly smart at how I was tracking it. I had the rule that I had to read three owned books before I could get one new one. And right off the bat, I learned that that three was too big a number. I immediately started feeling constrained with it. And also the way I was tracking it, not using the titles, just talking about the types of books, I very quickly realized that I would lose track. Like if I had forgotten to log a book quickly enough and I couldn't remember, okay, is that indie review book the last one I read or the one before then? Did I log it? Or I just crossed off the phrase new book instead of writing down what the new book was so I couldn't remember you know if I'd accidentally got in a new book but forgot to cross it off I couldn't look back and be like I, I don't remember if I had that one so my tracking was dismal the number was too big and uh worst of all I had review books books sent to me for review put down as books that could help me unlock new slots but I didn't use the new slots to get review books and my reasoning was I can't really control the rate at which review requests come to me. And at the time, I was still in the height of my I don't really want to have to say no aspect. So I felt bad just saying like, hey, don't get any spots in the list open just yet. I'll get back to you in a little bit, which is a surprisingly hard skill to learn. So this one did not last very long. Um, I only got to the second spread <laughs> Of, of the challenge, as you can see, only have filled. I can't imagine what in March of 2022 got me so distracted from my very important TBR challenge, but that was pretty dismal. And I originally had just given up assuming that, oh, I can't do TBR challenges. It just must not be for me uh, for at least a year and a half at that point. And I, I still can't remember what it was. I can't remember what I was watching or reading or thinking about that suddenly inspired me to be like, you know what, let's do it. Let's try. But something did. And in January of 2022, I randomly decided to myself, screw it, tally up the books. Let's see what we're looking at. And we were looking at uh, over 400. I'm not sure the exact number because as I started going through it in unhauls, I realized that several books on my Goodreads want to read were books that I did not own, but it was few enough that I know for a fact that it was over 400 books, hence the title of this video. And that's when I really realized the scope of the problem. I remember how long it took me just to enter in all of those book bub books in my e-reading apps. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, I got, I got so much work to do. And that oddly enough galvanized me into like jumping right in and that January of 2022 was my most productive month of the first round. And the reason I say round is because in this first bit of the TBR challenge started in January of 2022, I did not actually intend to get to literal zero. My goal was 50. So let's talk about the things I learned and did much better the second time around to actually 
make it work to take a lot off my TBR. First of all, I got a lot better at tracking literal numbers. I started with a little bullet journal spread as per usual. And you will see here at the beginning of 2022, I had this based on my Goodreads uh, read and want to read. I had 464 books read according to Goodreads and 430 on my want to read. Now, like I mentioned before, some of those were books that had just kind of gotten onto my want to read on Goodreads that I didn't actually own. So that 430 wasn't the full number, but it was over 400. However, you will also notice that by the end of January of that year, I was already down to 360. And that is because... I got a lot better at unhauling. I didn't really focus on it the previous time because I wanted to like read all the books. But as I started looking through, I'm like, there's just so much I'm not interested in in these books. And for a while, I had the rule that uh, I could either read two books to get a new slot. And I actually did. Let me look here. Yes, I actually did eventually figure out to put the titles of the books that I was reading and getting, or I could unhaul 10 ebooks, or I could mix and match, read one, unhaul five ebooks. And the reason for this was I just had that many ebooks <laughs> to be gotten rid of. I've called this the obvious unhaul when I talk about this on my blog, but there were so many books that I honestly could not remember the reason I even decided to download them. Um, again, probably from those years of just downloading anything that was free without really looking at it. So there were so many books that I could just clear out really quick. And those first few rounds of unhauling, especially the digital books, so simple, so easy. But I very quickly learned a very big fact of any kind of lower the TBR or zero TBR challenge. They will never work unless you are willing to get real honest with yourself. So I had to get very honest with myself in two ways. One, what books am I actually going to read? And two, the sources that I was getting the books, are they actually serving my interests or am I just excited to get new books? The first one uh, was tricky because there are so many books that I had on my library at the time where I didn't want to read, but I wanted to be the kind of person that read them if that makes sense. I had so much horror, surreal horror, which is really funny because surreal horror does not work for my brain. Eventually, the descriptions get so weird that confusion overtakes fear and I am no longer afraid because I am studying that same paragraph five times just to understand what the fuck is going on. <laughs> so I had to get rid of all the surreal horror and I had a lot of Highlander romances too. And I think it was because I do generally like historic romance, but for some reason, the specific subgenre of Highlander romance just doesn't hit. But I had to start getting really honest with myself about what my actual tastes are, not do I, I want to be the kind of reader that looks like they read everything, because I don't think anybody is. I don't think anybody genuinely reads absolutely everything. You can read a very wide range but most people will have one subgenre, one type, one age range that they just don't like, and that's fine. But I kind of had to give up the idea that I am the reader that will read absolutely anything because I'm not. <laughs> it's time to unhaul the books that weren't serving that purpose. And then the other part was, of course, looking at the sources. I talked in my section about how my TBR got that big, that I had a lot of sources that weren't serving me very well or they had only served me well in very small amounts and I had kind of deluded myself into thinking that if I just kept getting a ton of books, I would stumble across another diamond in the rough and end up with so many books on the TBR. And so I had to really look at those sources and be like, what sources are actually serving me? What areas of book getting are actually getting me the books I want to read? Now, again, thankfully, one of those sources took itself out when that nerd store closed down their book section, but I had to start ignoring all of the BookBub emails. I could not bring myself to to unsubscribe. I have a weird sentimental attachment to BookBub. Like I mentioned before, it was how I got into reading indie books in the first place and that the things that I decided to do back then when I was reading BookBub 
formed a lot of what I am today as an indie book reviewer. So it's like, it's a weird attachment, but I did not allow myself to even open the emails for the longest time, just in case. And thankfully, a lot of those sales are uh, short term. So even if I had a bunch of BookBub emails sitting in my inbox unread, a lot of those sales would go defunct. So it wasn't even a big temptation to just leave them there because a lot of them after a certain like week or so would no longer be a viable free book anyway. So I very quickly shut those avenues down. I had to look at uh, the the used bookstores that I would go to. I had to look at my own habit of never wanting to make an author feel bad and walk away from a table without buying one of their books. That was the hardest. Oh, that was the hardest. And I've learned that unless I'm feeling really on top of things mentally that day, if I'm at like um, our mall does little mini conventions here and they have author table set up, if I'm not willing to go through the mental process of extricating myself from the table without getting a book, I don't even approach the table. And again, no authors have been terrible about it. They don't expect every person that walks up to the table to get one. I just feel bad. <laughs> in my heart if I walk up to the table and don't buy anything. So I just won't walk up to the table unless I am prepared to either get a book or go through that whole mental process. And I slowly started narrowing down the sources that were actually working for me. But more importantly than anything, the biggest thing I learned was the importance of researching your books. Like I mentioned before, growing up, I had gotten very used to, you can't be picky, don't be picky, just grab what is available and go. And as a result, my reading throughout most of my youth was very slipshod. And I would start a new series, love it, and then just never continue with it because I didn't have a ton of access to the internet growing up. Uh, I did not have my own laptop until I was 19. And so I spent most of my youth sharing the computer with the entire family of six. And I got one hour on the computer a day, not on the internet, on the computer. So if there was anything else on the computer you wanted to do, I loved playing Sims. That was it. That was your hour. So I definitely did not have the time to do any kind of research on the books that I wanted to read. And as a result, uh, it took me forever to figure out that I could do that, that I could start keeping track of the series that I was reading and in the middle of and is the next book out. Let's check at that. And I slowly started to realize as I started this, I love researching the books I'm getting. <laughs> Strangely, it's, I, I had to learn it the hard way over the course of this challenge because when I first started getting the new slots open, I would grab out whatever. I was so excited to be able to get a new book. I would go for the first thing and then 90% of the time, again, I was only middling interested in it. And if it was an ebook, I could probably just delete it and get it right back off. But if it was uh, a physical book, I would have to find a way to unhaul it. And that got so annoying. I hate unhauling physical books. I hated feeling like a burden bringing giant bags and or boxes to the local used bookstore because their shelves were already so crowded. And I would see all of the other giant bags and boxes of books that other people had brought in. Thrift stores are so overloaded, you guys. So I would feel compelled to keep that uh, physical book because unhauling it was such a pain. And then now that slot is gone when there's some other book that I probably would have liked, but now I got to read two more books. So I slowly started realizing, hey, I should probably look ahead and figure out what book I wanted to get next for when that new slot would open up. And that's when it finally occurred to me, I should try a little harder to keep track of my series and return to authors that I like and just look at other people's recommendations and just research more ahead of time before I get the books. And this was a bit of a revelation to me that not only that I could do that, but also that I loved it so much. As I sit here now, I have a one color coded spreadsheet for the series that I am in the middle of. And then I have another color coded spreadsheet for books that I want to get. So like I I am like literally it's on lists and I check the lists regularly and I double check if I still want the book or does it need to be taken off and I feel really vindicated whenever a book gets taken off without being purchased because that's how I know that I avoided another book that I would have had to unhaul and I started looking more into the pop sugar reading challenge which prior to 2022 was something that I had always tried but had never succeeded in because I just kind of 
hoped that I would read the correct books and the prompts and some of the prompts would get very specific. But in 2022, as I started hardcore researching my books, I'd be like, okay, let's look ahead. What do I need for this prompt in the pop sugar? Let's research it. Let's look it up. And by doing that, I found new series that I adored and I started really getting into backlist books and books from so long ago and it was so much fun to do the research and find the book that matched the prompt and knowing me and my hipster tendencies I probably went a little too hard in trying to find like more obscure books like I didn't want the obvious answer <laughs> but it was just a lot of fun I mean still is still is so much fun to try and find the books that match what I'm looking for and uh, getting to actually complete a lot of series. I have completed so many more series in the last couple of years than I ever have before. And I just got to feeling so much better about my reading as an all-encompassing hobby, something that I put a lot of effort into. And a lot of it was because I was forced to buy my self-imposed restrictions. I had to make every new slot opened on the TBR count because I wasn't going to get another one for a little bit. And I really wanted to focus on the books that I really, really liked and the books that were most likely to be a five star. And as a result, my average star rating got higher as I got a lot more four and five stars instead of the meh three stars because I was putting that much more work into researching the books. And in general, I've just discovered that researching the books makes me more likely to like <laughs> the book. Not entirely. Uh, I have had a lot of problems with anticipated releases lists. <laughs> I usually prefer a book that has already been out for a hot minute and has plenty of other people talking about it as my research first. I don't think I entirely trust my own instincts. But regardless, um, I do credit this with the Lower the TBR challenge purely because I don't think it would have occurred to me to do that kind of research prior to putting myself under those restrictions and having to make every new book I get count. Now I spent a lot of this challenge so nervous that the second it was over I was just going to go back to all of my bad habits and get a whole bunch of books and have to start all over and I started realizing that the habits were actually sticking during my pause month. So over the course of the challenge for the months of April, my birthday month, and December, month of Christmas, I would completely pause the challenge. I get a lot of gift cards to various bookstores from friends and family. So I knew that there was a very high chance that I would want to spend more in those months. And I just knew in general that taking breaks was probably going to be a lot healthier to maintain my will to continue it. And so I had it set where during the months of April and December, I could get as many new books as I wanted, but none of the books I read counted towards new slots when I regained the challenge the next month. And I was so sure at first that this was going to be a huge risk and I was going to build up and lose progress, but I actually realized, no, I got a couple more books than I would have gotten under the challenge. But in a lot of cases, it was the sequels and series that I was really excited for, that one book that I had been thinking about a lot. And I was so excited to get those books and then read them that I was not focusing on getting a bunch of other random new books because I was invested in what I had already researched ahead of time. And it was still a struggle to get to the literal end of this first round. Because remember, again, I was not trying to get to zero the first time. I was trying to get to 50. Uh, I believe in a blog post at some point, very recently, actually, this year, I said something to the effect of, I don't think I could ever get to zero. <laughs> I did not believe in myself four months ago, but <laughs> I thought to myself, okay, we're going to set a new challenge once I get to 50. But even getting to 50 was very difficult. From the 70 mark down, was particularly hard. The TBR game that I was playing at the time was not conducive because I just didn't have a lot of books to fit the prompts that I was rolling for. And for some reason, it took me an embarrassingly long time to think, oh, I should change the prompts in the TBR game to serve this purpose. I, I don't know why that didn't occur to me, <laughs> but it didn't for the longest time. And I was getting really burnt out and just wanting it to be done and just wanting to be off the challenge that by the time I got to 55, I'm like, Screw it. I picked five books to unhaul. 
because my desire to get to 50 and be done with the challenge was greater than my desire to read any of those books. And I was like, ha, I have finished it, done forever. I will never get any farther down. And then shockingly, that was, I don't even know what time that was, like what time of year, because apparently I had once again given up on chronicling after May of 2024. Uh, no, 2023. Sorry. Uh, I had gone down to 85 at the end of May 2023 and then gave up chronicling. I think, I think I got to 50 in January of 2024 just by unhauling. But then I had this kind of thing of done. I will go into maintenance mode where I have to read or unhaul one to get one. One in, one out. We'll just stick around the 50 mark. But then I started noticing when I went to write my here's how I got my TBR down to 50 blog post for the blog, I realized my TBR actually wasn't at 50. It was at 40. It had dropped 10 books without me trying. I was like, oh, wow, you know, that's kind of fun. And then I checked again over the summer, I believe June or July of 2024. And it had dropped 30s again without me really trying. And that's when I got the idea. Could I get to actual zero? So by the beginning of July, I finally figured out that I should change the prompts in my TBR game to suit my needs. So I slimmed them way down and made sure that for the most part, every uh, prompt that I rolled would apply to a book that I already owned. And that worked for a while. I went back to the uh, read or unhaul to to get one set up. And I was still getting a little bit of new books at that point. Uh, there was a lot of yet more awkward unhauling because, you know, there was that one book really late in a series and I liked all the other books, but I really didn't want to read that book. And and then I finally realized, you know, Margaret, you should not be having to force yourself to read a book. This is your hobby. You do it for a leisure activity. <laughs> and I finally unhauled it. It helped that I uh, had gone on Pango Books and I had actually um, sold a couple things on there and I was able to get new books earlier in the year with that. So I had more incentive to, to unhaul. Of course, that means I do have a shelf in the office that is books that are technically unhauled, but waiting to be purchased. Link in the description. Anyway, uh, by the end of July, going into the first little bit of early August, that's when I realized I had like 12 books left on the TBR, if that. And I was like, fuck it, let's go. And I said, no new books at all, nothing, just go. So of course, I immediately realized that I had to get a new book. <laughs> uh, what I thought was book 14 in a series was actually book 15. And so to be able to read that book, I had to get the one before it. So I did have to buy one new book. And that it was never a, a question as to whether or not I was going to DNF it because it is one of my favorite series that I want to complete. So I literally like DNFing those books off the TBR wasn't even an option. So I had to get that book. I had to read it. Well, technically I do. I do the audio books for Amelia Peabody at this point. Uh, they were very nice. I enjoyed them. It was just frustrating to have to add one more book to the TBR. And then I also realized that one of the books I had on my TBR, I'd accepted it for review right? I, I had gone to the email the author had sent me. I liked it. I went to Goodreads. I put it on the TBR. And then when I went back to the email to download the PDF copy to start reading it, I realized I'd never actually told the author I accepted it. <laughs> Apparently, I had just put it on my Goodreads TBR and considered it done. And there was this little voice. There was this little voice that was like, you could just take it off the TBR. <laughs> You didn't, you don't have the copy. You don't technically own it. You could just take it off. But that felt like cheating because I did have it on my TBR and I did intend to have it. And so taking it off just to then put it on back on a couple of days later, it felt like cheating. So I was like, nope, nope. We'll, we'll add it. We'll do, we'll do it. We'll contact the author, get the copy, read it. And it ended up being the very last book that I read tonight of August 31st, 2024. I'm tired. <laughs> I was honestly surprised that the beginning of the school year didn't slow me down as much. I 
honestly believe that once I got back to work, working in, you know, an elementary school with mentally ill children, that I was going to basically have to push all the reading off and go to next month. But I was so energized to get this done. Like the excitement I felt the last two months of this was incredible. I read 18 books in both July and August, which is my record. I have never been 18 books. That is currently the absolute top limit of the books I read in a month. And I hit it two months in a row just to complete this challenge. But uh, as I was also completing this challenge, I was also <laughs> preparing for all the new books I was going to get. Which brings us into what's the plan moving forward? Now that you hit zero, what comes next? The thing is, even as I was doing all this work, I never actually assumed that my TBR was going to remain at zero for any significant period of time. I will be flabbergasted if this thing lasts for more than 24 hours, if it even lasts 24 hours, considering the fact that I already have library books waiting to go for the September TBR. Uh, but I am putting in more systems in place so that I will not have to do a read down the TBR challenge. I will just naturally be limiting what I bring in and that will be done through a color-coded spreadsheet. I have discovered that I love a color-coded <laughs> spreadsheet. I have one set up where I have it in lists of what I'm going to get. So I have, you know, continuous series, repeat author, pop sugar prompts, random picks, that kind of thing. And then they're each color-coded for what form I am going to get them in. Am I going to get them as an ebook? Am I going to go to the library? Am I going to buy secondhand? Or am I going to buy new? Now for ebooks, I am only going to purchase the book once it has made its way onto a month TBR. So I roll, I get the prompt, I go to my to get list, find a book on there that fits that prompt, that's when I buy that book. For library books, I'm going to try to do something similar, uh, mostly because, you know, you only get a little short time frame, so it's not like I can get a library book a month out anyway. I'll just have to be really cognizant of waiting lists to make that monthly TBR thing work. However, Things like buying secondhand books online is going to be a little bit trickier because you don't know how shipping times are going to work. And also buying single books is not only bad for the environment because you're using up so much fossil fuel every time you buy a single book, but it's also more expensive. So my goal is, at least for thrift books, I am going to amass a cart of continuing a series, pop sugar prompts, still books that I have placed in that cart with intention. I am not going to add a book just to get to that free shipping, even though in thrift books, a lot of times with the books I'm getting, <laughs> that book costs as much as the shipping. <laughs> but regardless, I'm going to get little batches, get the free shipping, have them all sent, and then I cannot get the next book in any of those series until I have enough to, again, get free shipping and get the next batch sent. I don't want to be a dick to the environment <laughs> in that way. So those will still be in batches. So I am still going to have a little bit of a sitting physical TBR, at least to a certain extent. Um, I actually do have some room on my shelves, and I think I'm just going to have to start stacking things like I'm a secondhand bookstore. And, you know, I love secondhand bookstores, so that's no tragedy for me. Um, but I want to keep everything under 20, give or take. If I get very big over that, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, I do want to stay away from like 50, though. I think, you know, 30 and under is kind of what I want to stick with moving forward. And I just want to be more intentional. I want to do research. Um, one of the things that I started doing as I was preparing for, you know, what books am I going to get next is there have always been these couple of books from way back when I was still just using the library. And for whatever reason, they stuck with me. I couldn't remember the title or the names, but I could remember these little pieces and how much I loved it in that one part. And so I like put in the most vague terminology and I managed to find a couple of those books uh, and one of them is the beginning of a, a fae romance series that I'm super excited for and I'm just I'm so hyped for so many of these books I have put in so much work and effort into adding them and researching them and I've noticed that that when I do that 
the more research and effort I put into, you know, looking up, should I buy this one on Pango or is it going to be cheaper on thrift books? Should I get the ebook version? You know, should I do this or this? And looking at reviews and it's so much fun. <laughs> I didn't realize how much fun it was, but also it makes me way more hyped to read the books. It is so much easier to convince my brain to jump into the books when I've done all that mental planning ahead of time. And I'm really excited for the books I have coming. Um, I also really want to work on series. I am in the middle of some gigantic series, like 16 to 20 book long series. And I want to get them, you know, read down and, and then make a very conscious effort to pick a new series to start. Like I'm just, I'm feeling so free, <laughs> so lighthearted because I don't feel like I've got the millstone of a bunch of books that I already own that I feel the urge that I have to read hanging around my neck. And will I still end up maybe DNFing and unhauling some of those physical books? Yeah, probably. I don't think I'm perfect in picking. Um, and especially when I have something like the pop sugar prompts where I didn't even pick the prompts that I'm going to be getting the book for, it'll probably happen. But I also noticed that over the course of this challenge, as I really started reading things down and unhauling ruthlessly, my average star rating started to go up because I was putting so much effort into the books I was getting that they were all books that I was like so happy to get that I just as a whole was rating things higher and this is really exciting <laughs> um oh moving forward I also want to start using my library more because my library does that thing where when you pick up a book on hold they give you your receipt and at the bottom of the receipt it tells you how much money you've saved by using the library from both since you started using the library and in that calendar year and I low-key want to see how big I can make that you have saved x amount of dollars this calendar year I like I think I could get four digits if they if they include audiobooks from Libby I'm definitely hitting four digits <laughs> but in general I'm I'm so hyped for things moving forward I'm so happy I did this it was two years of work <laughs> and I think that's probably part of the reason why it doesn't work well for other people. You know, you always hear that whole zero TBRs just don't work. And I think it's because people don't realize the sheer amount of time and energy it's going to take you to do it. I didn't think I'd be here for two years. <laughs> and I didn't think I'd be stressing out and having to put things on pause and having to like basically almost quit and then go back to it. And it's a lot. And it is also a lot of forcing yourself to be honest with yourself and really looking into your habits with capitalism and consuming and purchasing and getting real honest with yourself there too, to finally get your book collection so well curated that every book feels like it might be a five star. Like, like dead serious. I am looking at my thrift books cart that... I can't purchase yet, I'm waiting for the next payday, but like, I'm so hyped for all of those books. And I have so much more mental freedom to try on new challenges. Do I want to try another challenge besides just the pop sugar challenge next year? Like, I'm thinking there's so many things now that I just have the mental space to put in all that effort and not feel like I should be reading all of these other books. I'm so excited for things. <laughs> moving forward. Um, I, I doubt I will be chronicling it much here moving forward because I still don't necessarily want to come back. This has been a lot of fun to film, but it's also taken me a really long time and blog posts are just quicker. They're just better for my mental health. They're just easier to make. If for some reason I really feel the urge to come back here for a specific purpose, I might, but I'm definitely not fully back to booktube. So thank you for watching this. Uh, it's probably one of my longer videos. Um, I did not expect this to be such a fulfilling challenge. Um, and I do hope that if you were in the middle of a zero TBR, you feel emboldened to keep going. Put in pauses when you need to. Be prepared to get real honest with yourself. And at the end, there is such freedom to be had. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.